what is going on people in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how we can address the question how important is it to save plant and animal species which are in danger of extinction now I know what you're thinking of you're thinking what do I know about plant and animal species that are in, the da in danger of ex extinction you know I, I don't know the latest or greatest in animal extinction I'm here to tell you that questions like these are still are still within the scope of uh, something you can handle so let's go into the basics without further ado now let's talk about letting things that have to happen happen I like to quote Tyler Durden a fight club and I find it resoundingly resoundingly accurate when he says I say never be complete I say stop being perfect I say let's evolve let the chips fall where they may and in that quote Tyler Durden encapsulates my response to the situation of plant and animal species that are going to be extinct if they're going to die off and be extinct then they're going to die off anyway so let them die just like the dinosaurs did new ones will take their place what do I mean by new ones new plants and animals will take their place let's talk about the idea of cross-breeding plants and animals do you know that if you cross-breed animals and plants you get new varieties you get this in fact that's how we that's how we discovered high yield varieties of crops that's how we discovered and created new types of orchid the national flower of Singapore is one such example the Venda Miss Joachim is a hybrid of a few different orchids animals dogs we have cross-breeded many different types of dogs and you know you have a whole range of pet dogs that are puppies, I mean uh, toy dogs, pet dogs, hunting dogs, all sorts of dogs. So if I say that with every plant and animal that goes extinct, a new species is likely to be born. Why focus on the past rather than the future? Why focus on something that is about to die off, something that has, li has little value, then focus on something that is new, has more potential, has more value? to us as a society these stronger life forms will probably make the world a better place instead of being a burden let's talk about burdens pandas are burdens pandas are animals that are on the edge of <coughs> being extinct they are in danger of being extinct but what else are they <coughs> what, are, what else are they known for they're known for being huge burdens they eat large amounts of bamboo that honestly could have been cold pressed into sugarcane juice did you think about that? Those, those sugar cane eating, ba those bamboo eatings, those bamboos and sugar cane. Now, is that the same thing? I was about to say they're competing with you for food. <coughs> and that's besides the point. Now, so besides eating large amounts of bamboo, what else, does, what else do pandas do? They sit around, they take a big shit after they finish eating all that bamboo, and then they go to sleep. And then the next day, the cycle repeats. They can't even be reared or consumed for meat. Not much use in saving a species like that. It's a huge economic burden. China sent two pandas to Singapore on a diplomatic mission. You know how much money a Singapore zoo has to spend in upkeeping these two pandas? So think about it. Why not breed a new form of plant and animal that is more resistant to current models of climate change that is that has more potential for benefit for the world and stop financially supporting burdens like this is it important to save them? no, I say let it be, let them die however, opponents of the idea that we should save these life forms argue that these life forms probably have research value, they have scientific value and maybe some you know heritage and economic value after all you know after all they came before us 
and they deserve to live and be preserved instead of being put into extinction by the lives and activities of homo sapiens everywhere. We human beings have made this world inhospitable for these <coughs> plants and animals that are about to be on the verge of extinction. So these arguments on moral grounds, scientific grounds, economic grounds, people say that because of these arguments we should try and save this, these biological life forms from going extinct. To be fair, to be fair, let's consider this. The survival of the fittest has been something all life forms on earth have had to contend with since the dawn of time. The dinosaurs, they couldn't survive the survival of the fittest, they died. The, uh, there's this bird-like thing that, that this, what do they call it? It's like kiwi, but it's not kiwi. <coughs> there is this bird, I can't remember the name of the bird now, but this helpless bird went extinct. What do, what, are we, are we the worst off for it? Is it, is, should we feel guilty? that something that was already a part of nature's plans, the survival of the fittest, some, that something like that occurred? Is there any reason that you know, we should consider the moral aspects of this question? So, that's something for you to think about. That being said, human beings are born with the capacity for empathy and compassion. And while we don't necessarily have to save them, there is no written law of the universe that says we have to save plant and animals that are on the verge of extinction, we can save them if we want to. The human choice, the ability to make decisions that run counter to our instincts, right? It's this choice that lets us know that we are human, and this choice to be humane and to be generous that makes us human. So the very act of saving these soon to be extinct life forms reinforces our humanity. While impractical, I feel that it ensures that we do not lose the better side of ourselves. So if you look at the big picture, there is not much need to save these plants and animals, but we should, because we can, because we're human. Thank you.